we will be discussing the simplest type of optical waveguide namely the uh, dielectric dielectric interface planar slab waveguide and in the discussion we will look at the the symmetric nature of the refractive index uh, profile and the T modes T m modes of the waveguide uh, then eigenvalue equation symmetric and anti-symmetric modes uh, which we will see is a consequence of the symmetric uh, refractive index profile then we will uh, define a quantity which is uh, very relevant and very important uh, is used for defining almost all kinds of optical waveguides then we will look at the uh, number of modes supported by an optical waveguide of this kind, uh, then the feed distribution across the waveguide. Then there will be another important uh, point that is the mode field uh, that is the single mode operation of the waveguide. Uh, this particular property is very, very useful, extremely useful in almost all applications. Mm, then we will look at the cutoff properties of the various modes which are uh, supported by the waveguide. Then this consequence of symmetric refractive index profile which will give rise to only symmetric and anti-symmetric modes. So, with this with this uh, points in mind we will uh, discuss the uh, planar dielectric slab waveguide. So, this is one the simple most structure where you have the uh, refractive index N 1 which is uh, which is sandwiched between uh, the two same refractive index layers that is uh, of refractive index N 2. Uh, these are the two interfaces. So, that there, is, there are two regions region 2 and region 1. Because of the nature of the, the waveguide, uh, we assume that this uh, y direction that is along this direction the waveguide is infinite and there is a refractive index profile variation only along this x direction, but this variation is a constant it gives rise to constant homogeneous refractive indices. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, there is a change in the refractive index across the interface. So, we will look at this property we assume that the thickness of the slab is slab is d so that and we set our coordinate system across this middle axial line such that uh, the upper interface falls at x equal to d plus d by 2 and the lower interface at x equal to minus d by 2. So, these are the notations and parameters that we will use in the in the determination of the waveguide modes and eigenvalue equations. So, in this case the wave equation uh, that is satisfied by the waves which will be propagating through the structure in each of the homogeneous layer of the waveguide will be given by this Helmholtz equation that is we consider the we consider the uh, T mode therefore, this E y is the is the electric field component which is non managing and H x H z will also associate with this u y. So, for region 1 that is within this layer which we will call the core and the other two layers surrounding this core will be called the cladding which is the conventional nomenclature where so n square of x the refractive index varies along this direction which is constant as long as this mod of x is less than plus minus delta 2. So, I define this layer which will have a refractive index n 1 and otherwise everywhere this is equal to n 2 square. So, the cladding refractive index is n 2 n 2 whereas, the core refractive index is n 1. So, for T modes once again we will we'll look at this configuration you have E y field which are parallel to the interface planes E y and H field magnetic field components will lie in the x z plane. 
So, it will give rise to two components and this e y comes through this equation that is uh, <coughs> this Helmholtz equation that is del square u y by del x square plus this quantity into u y equal to 0. So, this is the, the mathematical representation for the refractive index profile and the wave equation for this structure as long as we are concerned with the T e modes. For the region 1 that is the one this region that is this region within the core we have this equation because this n square of x now assumes a constant value that is n 1 square. So, for the core we have this equation and and for region 2 that is for the cladding there are two re such regions. So, we have this equation and we write this slightly in a modified way we take this minus out and put it in this form. The intention is very simple because beta we will see that beta should lie somewhere between k 0 n 1 and k 0 n 2. So, to make it positive beta square minus k 0 square n 1 n 2 square this quantity will be positive which is the transverse component of the, the propagation constant in the cladding and we call this quantity as gamma, gamma square. So, I write this equation for cladding like this. Then we define the mode parameters. This we have seen. These are the x components of the k vector in the core and cladding. So kappa square is written as k 0 n 1 square minus beta square. Beta is the z component of the propagation vector. Beta is z and kappa will have x component and along y direction we have assumed that the waveguide is infinite. So, we, we get rid of the y component of this k vector. So, the k x and k z these two constitute k, k x within the core we have called kappa and outside this k within the with the within the cladding we call this is gamma and because n 1 is more than beta we write in this way whereas, beta is more than n 2. So, we write in this way for modes to be supported. So, we will look at this condition later with these definitions then we can write this equation that uh, del square e y del x square plus kappa square e y equal to 0 for the first equation and for the second equation we can write this del square e y del x square minus gamma square e y equal to 0. So, these are the two equations two wave equations for e y. Uh, governing the propagation of the electric field in the structure for for the core and the cladding. So, so the solutions to 1 and 2 the solution to this equation is very well known very well known and it appears very frequently in physics this equation will give you an oscillatory solution for u y which can be written as a e to the a, a dash e to the power of i k x plus b dash e to the power of minus i k x. I use dash because we can we can simplify this using some different uh, constants and for the for the for the for the cladding region this equation will give you the solution that is which will be exponentially decaying solution because you have a minus here this equation is also very well known in physics. So, these two equations put together will give me the complete field solutions in the core and cladding of the symmetric refractive index dielectric waveguide. So, we may write equation 1 that is what I told just now that we can write in the sin cosine form. So, this a e to the power of i k x b dash e to the power of minus i k x can be simply written in this form a cosine kappa x plus b sin kappa x. Now, because of the symmetric nature of the waveguide because this side and this side they are identical. So, both of them will be will be treated with the same constant. So, therefore, C and D are same as long as the waveguide has a symmetric refractive index profile. The variation of the field along this direction and along this direction will associate the same constant that is what the idea is. And, and in that case 
this quantity the first part will represent an exponentially decaying wave when x is positive, but this second part will be representing an exponentially decaying wave when x is negative and because c is equal to d. So, this will represent only the upper heart of the upper half of the in interface. So, the wave which will be which will be traveling across this layer will be e to the power of minus gamma x, but the wave which will be traveling across this will be e to the power of plus gamma x because x is negative here. Therefore, with this notation and convention we write this equation u i for d x greater than d by 2 that is for upper half c e to the power gamma x and u i for the for the layer below the lower interface will be represented by nevertheless c and d they are identical in the case of a symmetric structure. Now, we will use the boundary conditions for the continuity of the of the tangential component of the fields. So, at x equal to plus d by 2 that is at the upper interface at upper interface we can use this u i must be continuous across the interface layer and that gives you a cosine I just have to plug in that x equal to plus d by 2 on on either side of this of this equation on either side of this equation this equation and uh, and this equation. In these two equations we will use x equal to plus d by 2. So, that gives you this condition and if I if I assume the continuity of the derivative of the field that is del e y del x across the interface which is also a continuity condition we end up with this equation. Now, that if we just combine these two if we just combine these two equations multiplying 1 by gamma you just have to multiply 1 by gamma then this quantity and this quantity will be same but with a difference of minus sign and if you then add then you will add up with this condition tan kappa d by 2 equal to a gamma plus b kappa by a kappa minus b gamma is a very very well known equation. So, I have used the continuity condition for the upper interface and that is for the field continuity and the derivative of the field continuity. I have not used the lower interface which will also give me the same boundary same 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 equation same relation. So, to see that at x equal to minus d by 2 at the lower interface that is x equal to minus d by 2 if I plug in this relation then I will end up with this equation this relation and also from this continuity of the derivative of the field will give me this condition and more proceeding in the same way that is multiplying 1 by gamma and then if we equate these two because in this case this right hand side will be equal and from there we can we can get a relation. So, there is a slight difference between this a gamma plus b kappa whereas, in this case a gamma minus b kappa and in the denominator you have plus whereas, in the earlier case it was minus, but both of them will represent tan kappa by kappa d by 2. So, therefore, these two must be equal to represent the same wave guide and same parameter same structure this eigenvalue equation must be holding good. Now, if you simplify this this will give you a condition that if you multiply this into this and this into cross multiplication will end up with this simplified condition twice a into b kappa square plus gamma square it is a very simple algebraic steps to execute then we will end up with this equation. Now, once we have this equation in hand it tells you two possibilities first one is that uh, that either kappa square plus gamma square must be equal to 0 in that case gamma square equal to minus kappa square, but that means that means n 1 and n 2 they are equal. If you look at the definition of kappa and gamma n 1 and n 2 because beta will cancel k 0 n 1 square will be equal to k 0 n 2 square. So, that means n 1 is equal to n 2 that means all layers are the same there is no waveguide there is no interface. So, that is a trivial condition. So, we will not continue with this condition 
we will look at this a b equal to 0 the other possibility. So, that means either a equal to 0 or b equal to 0. So, these two conditions will lead to the other possibilities. So, this one I have already explained that uh, that kappa square equal to minus gamma square will give you no interface and this is a trivial condition. For this one let us suppose we start with the condition b equal to 0. Then from this equation from this equation if I put b equal to 0 b equal to 0 then you get that gamma by kappa and this gamma by kappa if I put this equation then the tangent value of this let us go to this. So, tan k d by 2 will become equal to b equal to 0 you have put. So, you get gamma by kappa. So, tan k kappa d by 2 you will be equal to gamma by kappa. So, that is the the equation which comes out of the condition that b equal to 0. So, I put b equal to 0 I get this condition and in the similar way if I put a equal to 0 I will get this condition. In that case I will put when you put a equal to 0 you get kappa by gamma the reciprocal of the earlier case that is and with a negative sign right. So, you get two conditions for b equal to 0 and a equal to 0. Now, eigenvalue equation. So, this defines the eigenvalue equation. You see if I put this in the solution of u i for the core that is mod x less than d by 2, I get this field solution which tells you because it is a cosine function. So, the fields are symmetric. So, this gives you the symmetric field distribution all fields will be symmetric and this is anyway evanescent field uh, evanescently decaying field at the outer uh, at the at the cladding region starting from the interface. So, using this using this condition in this equation then we get the even value equation using this condition we get the Eigen value equation as this tan k d by 2 tan because in that case you have to multiply d by 2 and d by 2 numerator and denominator if you bring it to the left hand side you get k d by 2 tan kappa d by 2 equal to uh, gamma d by 2. So, this is the Eigen value equation corresponding to the symmetric field distribution which corresponds to the, the condition that b equal to 0. And let us define this v number which is a very important parameter uh, for optical wave guides v is defined as k 0 half of the thickness this is different in different textbooks uh, this is half of the half of the thickness and this is the numerical aperture and n 1 square minus n 2 square. So, the core cladding refractive index square difference. So, v square is equal to this quantity and you can see that uh, the, that you can write this equation as k d square by 4 and gamma d square by 4 because if you add one if you subtract one beta square and then add one beta square this quantity will correspond to correspond to kappa and the other quantity will correspond to gamma. So, that is why I have written this v square is equal to this. So, v square can be put into this form and you can see that v square equal to x square plus y square if you call this quantity equal to x and if you call this quantity equal to y. So, you can write this equation which is the equation of a circle of radius v and these are the equations which are the outcome of the of the Eigen value equation. Now, now I so this is the th this is the consequence of the definition of v number which appears in terms of the kappa and gamma and this is the Eigen value equation. Now, to look for the solution of the modes achha, in the same way in the same way a equal to 0 e to the e y of x this will be the field solution uh, and that corresponds to anti symmetric modes and the, the evanescently decaying field will be the same using this condition I again from here can arrive at this condition which will be the Eigen value equation for the anti symmetric modes. We can actually put two of them together in one compact uh, compact Eigen value equation which will represent both symmetric and anti symmetric modes. Now, again using v number for the anti symmetric modes we can write this equation which is the same and for the Eigen value equation now this time it becomes y equal to minus x cot of x cotangent of x. 
So, we have two eigen value equations and one equation of a circle. So, we plot them, we plot them because we are looking for the solution of the modes. So, this is your x tan x, this is your x cotan cotangent x alternatively they are appearing and now I draw a circle of radius radius v which is equal to this which is equal to this. So, at this point it will be gamma d by 2 and at this point it will be kappa d by 2. So, this radius the points of intersection of the circle with the curves b and c gives the solution to the Eigen value equation. So, you can see that this there will be one solution here for the value of v which is less than pi by 2 here this will be less than pi again it is close to pi so on and so forth for this value of v and if you increase the value of v you will get you will get more number of solutions. So, it is the v that is going to decide v number going to decide how many modes will be supported in the structure. Okay. Now, from this figure you can see when the value of v is less than pi by 2 is less than pi by 2 because this line less than pi by 2. So, you have only one symmetric mode, but if the value of v is between pi by 2 and pi between pi by 2 and pi then you have this point of course, this encloses this point. So, you have one symmetric mode the value which lies between pi by 2 and pi somewhere here then you can have one symmetric one symmetric mode and one anti symmetric mode. So, there will be two modes and in this way if you proceed for the values of v which lies between twice m plus 1 pi by 2 and twice m plus 2 pi by 2 that is within a spread of pi by 2 between these two positions then you will have m plus 1 symmetric modes and m plus 1 anti symmetric mod modes. So, this is simply just by induction of these two initial facts we can we can arrive at the conclusion that the total number of modes will be supported that is equal to twice m plus 2 provided that the value of v lies between this this is twice m plus 2. So, this is the total number of modes which will be supported we will see how the modes look like. Now, equation a is so total number of modes we have supported. Now, thus this condition gives you twice m plus 2 modes and if this v lies between twice m pi by 2 and twice m plus 1 pi by 2 between them then the total number of modes in the same way will be twice m plus. That means, whether you are you are at the symmetric mode or you are at the anti symmetric mode as the last point of intersection. So, in this way you can generalize the condition that the total number of modes supported by in the in the waveguide will be a integer which is closest to or greater than this twice v by pi. So, this is a very beautiful finding and it is used for for determining the properties of the waveguide when we know the v number. So, it tells you that this v number gives you many modes that is k d by 2 equal to x this approximately equals to this quantity. So, the point of intersections are the solutions. So, this is a rough way of estimating the, the propagation constants for the various modes because this at the cutoff at this point x equal to pi by 2 these are very close points you can just have a look at it this is very close to pi this is also very close to pi by 2, but this will be even more closer when you approach for large number of modes. So, therefore, a, a an empirical way of finding the the mode parameters the the mode the mode propagation constants by using this relation. Okay. So, these are the mode field distribution you can see for m equal to 0 you have this symmetric mode which is called the fundamental mode m equal to 0 for m equal to 1 you have the anti symmetric mode and for m equal to 2 you have again the symmetric mode. So, these are the, the modes which will be supported in the structure when v is less than 0 v is greater than 0, but less than 2 you have one symmetric mode. So, for this 
regime of operation when I choose the waveguide parameters in such a way including the wavelength such that the V number falls between 0 and pi by 2, then the structure will support only one mode and that is the fundamental mode. Such a waveguide is called a single mode waveguide at that operating wavelength and you see that this mode will be symmetric about x all the even modes that is n m equal to 0, 2, 4 etcetera will be all symmetric modes. So, you have a and we call this waveguide wave as a single mode waveguide which is very relevant and very important in the study of in the in the in the science of optical waveguides. For single mode operation v equal to v equal to this quantity because we have defined this. So, therefore, the condition d is equal to half of lambda 0 n 1 square minus n 2 square. So, if the waveguide dimension that is core refractive index and lambda 0 are such that they satisfy this condition, then you automatically take care of the single mode nature of the waveguide. The waveguide supports one fundamental T modes and it is referred to as the single mode regime of operation. Let us take an example, the core and cladding refractive indices are are n 1 equal to this which are the typical values for glass and uh, op planar optical waveguides and the wavelength of operation is it is equal to 1.5 micrometer. If you plug in these values in the in the, in the relation here then you get the value of d which is very close to 3.07 micrometer. If the waveguide dimension is less than this wavelength of operation is this or below this and and the refractive indices of the core and cladding are these, then this waveguide will be a single mode one for all wavelengths which are below lambda 0 equal to 1.5. Now, then the cutoff property for guided modes you have this property because anyway the propagation constant has to lie between these for every mode. Now, if they are critically equal that is k 0 n 2 is equal to b 2 beta 2, then that is what we call the cutoff. So, that gives you the condition. So, if gamma that is k 0 n 2 minus beta 2 square will become equal to 0 that is equal to gamma equal to 0 because of this condition. So, that tells you v equal to kappa d by 2 which is equal to x. So, x tan x equal to 0 from the eigenvalue equation and x cot x will be equal to 0 these are the conditions for symmetric and anti-symmetric modes and we end up with this condition that tells you for V c, V c will be equal to 0, V c will be equal to m pi to get this condition equal to 0. So, so that is, so I just roughly take the value of m equal to 1, 2, 3 that gives me the value of V c, the cutoff V value at which and below which those modes will be supported fundamental mode has no cutoff because if whenever there is some excitation it is always the fundamental mode and you can see from this equation also that there is no cutoff for the fundamental mode it is always present in the waveguide. Now, there is one issue one important point that if you consider a symmetric refractive index profile of the waveguide you can write this mathematically like this and for T modes we can write down this equation which is an eigenvalue equation if you transform x to minus x, I can write this equation like this. You can see that both the equations, I mean both the both the uh, e, of, e of y, e of ui of x and ui of minus x, they satisfy the same equation. So, both ui and ui of minus x satisfy the same equation. Hence, these two are the eigenfunctions with the eigenvalue. So, this, this means that these two are the degenerate states or it could be that this must be a multiple of e y. So, this possibility of degenerate states can also be shown to be the identically the same consequence, but if we consider e y of minus x equal to lambda times this, this will this then again you transform this x to minus x that is e y of x will become lambda into e y. So, I put minus x again put back x equal to minus x which gives you that lambda square equal to 1. So, that is lambda equal to plus minus 1. That means, e y 
of minus x is equal to plus minus. This is this is very clearly the condition of the symmetric nature of the symmetric and anti-symmetric nature of the mode profile. So, therefore, if the fields are either symmetric or anti-symmetric provided that the refractive index profile is of symmetric nature. So, you can see that E of minus x equal to E of E of x is a symmetric field, but E of minus x equal to minus E of x then it is anti-symmetric and so on. So, these are the these are the consequence of a symmetric refractive index profile. Now, I conclude here by saying that the we discussed this symmetric uh, slab waveguides for the T modes. So, we will take up the T m modes next. We discussed the eigenvalue equations and then symmetric and anti-symmetric modes even and odd modes which are supported by this waveguide. We have tried to depict the mode pictures also mode profiles, discuss the V number, then from the V number how we can evaluate, we can estimate the number of modes that will be supported, field distribution of the modes, then a very, very particular thing about the optical waveguides is the single mode operation for the slab waveguide that also we have discussed then we discuss the cutoff properties, symmetric refractive index profile and the consequence of that in terms of symmetric and anti-symmetric field profiles. Thank you.